Hey everyone, today I decided to uh, spend some time reviewing this pretty cool Olympus Trip 35 camera that's been with me for about a year or so. I ordered it on uh, Etsy from a gentleman in UK who actually rebuilds them, so mine is in a almost new condition. It's been very nicely cleaned, the viewfinder is exceedingly clear, the lens is clear, the uh, automatic light metering system works, everything on it is pretty much in uh, excellent condition and um, um, as you can see it has the le red leather red on it which is certainly not something that would came with um, originally but I kinda fancied the color so I decided to go with it when I ordered it so let me give you a super quick review of this and kinda tell you some of my opinions uh, about this camera I guess just starting from uh, the general idea of it it's pretty unique in as much uh, it actually doesn't require a battery um, this solenoid on the front of the lens in essence uh, collects enough light in order to be able to use it for metering purposes and based on the amount of light um, it makes a decision on how long the exposure is going to be so it controls both the exposure and uh, shutter speed so there's really not much for a photographer to do other than set the focal distance uh, which we'll talk about a little later so when you really think about it um, in terms of um, how dependent we are on batteries today this camera is actually pretty awesome because um, it will just keep on shooting as long as that solenoid works uh, just starting uh, with the lens no place in particular it's a Zoico lens 40 millimeter uh, f 2.8 largest aperture it's uh, really sharp especially I would say close down to 5.6 or smaller apertures um, at 2.8 I think it's decent but perhaps not as sharp as higher up nonetheless it does produce uh, pretty nice images even then um, moving on you can see this little um, metal ring here and I don't know how well you can see the numbers but it shows you the ISO or ASA rating so um, as you rotate that ring you can set the uh, ASA or ISO rating to whatever your film is and it goes from 25 ISO on the low side all the way up to about let's see here 400 so not very good on the high end but definitely good on the low end so if you have say Delta 400 film you just put it in there you set this to 400 and then this silver ring behind there you want to set on A which means auto and when you have it on A you're in essence giving the opportunity uh, for the camera to do its thing and measure the light using the solenoid and then make all the exposure decisions for you I guess the last thing to talk about the lens is the focal distance and so instead of numbers because this was kind of a uh, kind of a I don't know dumbed down camera that was for the masses instead of having the distances and numbers what you have is these various pictures so you basically have a picture of a uh, I guess a single human uh, two humans like uh, uh, you know a mom and a, a kid or something like that and then the next one is like a, a family and then after that the mountain so I think the biggest challenge with using this camera is just kind of uh, using this uh, focal distance selector so you're always sharp basically how this plays out is uh, this little um, first setting is somewhere about three to three and a half feet so if you're about six feet tall if you stretch out your arm out as far as you can and just a little bit beyond that like for instance right over here uh, as my arm is stretched out would be three three and a half feet so that's that setting and then um, actually the way I do it is I jump over to how far this red one is the red one is about six feet away so um, again if you're about a six feet tall person if you imagine yourself laying down the floor the distance to there would be the red and simply the one here in between is the distance in between those two which is about four and a half feet so just kind of go over it again 
this is your three feet four and a half feet six feet and then obviously the mountains are landscapes like at infinity or whatever you can actually see that this uh, one of these settings is in red color the reason why that is is basically if you set the focal rating to um, six feet or so which is this red and then just go about doing general things where most of your subjects you care about them being sharp at about six feet and beyond um, <clears throat> you're not gonna have any problems you can pretty much leave it at that the whole time the only time you would have to go down to lower like uh, three feet is if you're really close to a subject you might even get a little bit of a bokeh at this setting uh, which is like that blurred background depending on what your shooting conditions are so if you go out with this guy in kind of a decent light um, and you want to do some say street photography um, your settings um, in terms of f-stop the camera is going to be setting are probably going to be uh, f5.6, f8, f11, f16 and you're really going to get enough depth of field here to go anywhere from I would say four feet to infinity so just about everything is going to be sharp all the time so not to worry about it too much to be honest with you first time I used it and I've never really had to set or guess focal distances before like 36 out of 36 came sharp um, one just has to be mindful of this all the time and one thing to help you with that is when you actually look through the viewfinder in this camera and I probably am not going to be able to show that to you on a video very well but it will actually let you see through the viewfinder a little bit of what your uh, focal distance is set at all right, the only last thing that I want to say is you do see here also f-stops that it seems like you can adjust manually and you can but if you read over here on the right it says for flash that means that you're actually um, supposed to do that in combination with flash so with those old flashes you would mount them here um, you would read the guide number and then figure out based on your eyes so what your f-stop should be um, I have a little tiny Olympus flash I put on there um, and if I'm shooting like say ASA 200 usually uh, for subjects that are about six feet for me I set it somewhere in between like five six or eight and I get decent pictures but you know there's more science to it on how to use flash so you can read up about that somewhere else but when you're out and about just set on an A and call it a day okay um, okay so now go to the top of the camera since we seem to be already there you basically have your uh, film uh, canister um, rewind um, also this is what opens the back we'll show you that later this is where you mount your flash this is your uh, trigger uh, or shutter switch um, this is your counter and this here is like a really cheap plastic wheel and uh, used for to advance film but hey it works so what else do you need um, other than that it's it's pretty much just like a box in the back if you have one of these uh, nicely cleaned up ones then uh, looks pretty cool back there um, in the on the bottom all you have is a basically a made in the japan stamp uh, film release button uh, when you're done with the film you have to press that to wind the film back and then uh, this is basically just your standard uh, tripod mount and i guess all we're gonna do is kind of like let's pretend as though that we're putting film in it's basically what you would have to do is you take and open this pull up on it uh, pull up one more time actually you know what I'm lying it doesn't work like that on this one it has a little uh, um, I don't know a lever down here that you pull back on and that actually pops it open you still do have to open this up but pulling up on it more is not gonna open it for you but anyway uh, what you just do is you put your film in here you take a leader across this area here make sure that those little sprockets um, are inside are hidden the holes on the film the perforation on the film and then you put your leader in here you basically just advance it a little bit um, then you fire off a shot you advance it again fire off a shot press this down of course to make sure that your film is kinda tight in place and close it take one more two two more shots and then you're ready to go and as you can see here my counter has also gone up to one uh, the only other thing I want to say is like this camera is pretty cool in a way that it works as if you don't have enough light like for instance now I shut the solenoid down uh, by putting the lid in front of it it will actually prevent you from taking a picture 
and in your viewfinder maybe you can even see it there a little bit this red will come up telling you you don't have enough light um, there could be a little bit of a problem when you're trying to load film because if you're trying to load film somewhere where there isn't enough light or your ISO isn't set high enough on your uh, lens and you try to advance it and then fire it off so you can advance it again sometimes it won't let you do that so a little trick that you can do is you can actually just turn it to any of these uh, manual settings and then it will actually let you take a picture no matter how much light you have or don't have so um, basically when you're loading film sometimes if you don't have enough light or your lens cap is on you might have to put it on the uh, manual setting in order to get your film to where you want it to be before you put it back in the A and start taking pictures with it alright I think that's all I wanted to say about this if I've forgotten some things um, then I'm sure I probably have um, you can comment on the bottom and add any particular information or ask any questions you would like to. Thank you and I hope you enjoy shooting with it.